remind me of something you did in the past life. Mm. Yes. Indeed. Let's uh we're gonna do one more question, then we're gonna get out of here, family. Let's see. Shout out to um I didn't I didn't get a chance to say shout out to Lucinda for the three dollar super chat and Cynthia for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right. Um we're gonna do two questions real quick. Let's um how do you overcome your inner demons? Anna wants to know how to overcome her inner demons. Look, anytime you're dealing with your inner demons, the first place is not going to be how you go. But the first thing that you have to do is everything you hate in other people, make sure that it's not in you. That's your first step. Mm. Because your inner demon is the one always tricking you that you the one right when you wrong as hell. Damn. It's the first step. That's all, all you can do is take the first step and the next step to follow. Once you go in a direction, you're going to start walking the path. So you, you the, the, go through them first. See if you got any of that. You a kleptomaniac? You a sex addict? You know, go through the seven deadly sins. You a glutton? You lazy? Then fight that shit. If you find that you inherently lazy, every day find something to do. Because now you are overriding that negative trait, and that's called slaying your inner demon. Also, your inner demon is unresolved traumas. As long as the unresolved trauma continues to affect your present life, you living with a demon on your back. All right, let's um and yeah, you got to confront that demon. And one of the suggestions made earlier, that might be one of the best ways. Lock yourself in the bathroom, right? Do what you do to focalize yourself. Some people get high as a kite to do it. Some people are just that sincere about wanting to confront their demon and look in that mirror and speak to that demon. Develop a big homie voice in your head that you can speak to that part of yourself that you know is weak. Because if the demon is strong, you've already lost. You got to speak to the demon like it's weak. You got to start speaking to yourself. What are the things about yourself that make you most uncomfortable? Because those are the things in other people that are making you comfortable. What is it about you that makes you uncomfortable? Ask yourself, why is it? Ask yourself, what do you need to do about it? And then command yourself to get it done. Start speaking to that demon like it's your little nigga. And subordinate it. Put it in the place that it deserves to be. You know, I'll call you forward when I need you. Other than that, fall to the back. So shut your ass up and go make some beats or something like, you know. <laughs> Metro and look, most of those demons are generational curses, which is energy from an ancestor. Your alcoholic ancestor don't want nothing more than for you to be an alcoholic like him to validate his fuck up. All the rest of your ancestors said, don't listen to that alcoholic ass nigga. He's going to have you strung out in alcohol, right? And as soon as you tell that alcoholic ancestor, I ain't finna be participating in that shit. Then all of the rest of the ancestors start serving as your spiritual protection to make you go sit your punk ass down. You heard the baby say she don't want nothing to do with you. Go sit your drunk ass down somewhere. You're not going to get the baby intoxicated on alcohol for the rest of her life. They'll correct it for you if you strap on your um, ovaries or testicles enough to tell that energy. I don't want. I don't want you to use me as your outlet. Just That's like you got good ancestors, you got some foul motherfuckers too. Damn. Mm -hmm. And if you don't confront the five motherfuckers, your good ancestors can't say nothing to them. Right. You got to defend yourself in order for them to defend you. Facts. Some real shit, right? And the, the yeah, that's the, the shit people don't want to hear. Yeah. I don't hear nobody talk about bad ancestors. I just hear whole oh, ancestors, oh, oh, ancestors. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, because everybody wanted to be all uh, peaches and cream. Half of these niggas' ancestors was the ones that sold out everybody else on the plantation. Mm. And now they over here trying to convince us that we from somewhere else so they can support that same bloodline bullshit. 
Mm. Do you think they just that just that energy just stopped because that person died? They passed that shit on. Contagion and aberration. Whew. Passing them um psychological defects down family lines like they passing the flu. <laughs> Somebody asked a good question and they said, what if it's their direct blood lineage like their mother, their aunt, their father, and they're no longer here and these people are just living with the trauma. Um, and I was suggest- You still got to address that energy though. Right, according of the cutting of the cord ceremony, you got to let her go by forgiving her, forgiving yourself because ultimately you contracted and chose to come through her. So you have to take ownership and strength back by taking some aspect of responsibility right that's the only way that you can start taking things back that you feel traumatized by step into a place of ownership and then you grant a forgiveness to her let her go that's the hard part because we've been taught to stay in the position of victim for so long that when it comes time for us to not be a victim it leaves a void we don't know what to replace it with. And it leaves a void. You have to find enough self-esteem in yourself, call your good ancestors to run your bad ancestors away. If you had issues with your mama and daddy, your granny, tell your mama, mama, come get your daughter. She ain't right. You tell your daddy, daddy, come get your son. He ain't acting right. He trying to get me to hold on to this traumatic bullshit. I don't want to hold on to it. The only reason why why we tormented by it because we keep reliving it. You can't undo it. You got to come to that realization. Since you can't undo it, then you have to surrender the hold that it have on you because you can't undo it. It already happened. Already happened. Mm. Right? And because it already happened, you're not going to change it from already being then took place. You can only rechange how, how you respond to it. Mm-hmm. Right, it's just like now. Person walk up to me on some shenanigans. I'm gonna give them every out before I chop them in the throat. But believe me, I can't wait till that last out is up so I can chop them in the throat. Mm-hmm. But I still gotta do my due diligence to peacefully resolve the matter. Right, right. And when I see that me peacefully resolving the matter not gonna work, throat chop. Mm-hmm. Lead with love, but master the throat punch. Mm-hmm. This that you know, cause just because you trying to be righteous don't mean you ain't gonna have to chop somebody in their throat or push their snap box back. That might happen. Mm-hmm. You think all these preachers you don't think none of them are get down and get down and get down with you? They come from the block. Right. Yeah. Some of these preachers will whoop the brakes off some of these gangsters. But because he thought that the church was the right way, he tried to change his life. You taking his kindness for weakness as if he wasn't a goon in his younger days. That's the same with people like us. Mm-hmm. I know I can look at Blue Pill and tell where, what he came through that was similar to what I came through. Same with you, Rich. And then I, it automatically gave me an automatic built-in respect because... Man, against all eyes, we ain't even supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Not doing this. Every prophecy about our lives when we was growing up, they said we wasn't going to make it to C21. Yeah. I'm 55 years old. How the hell I get here? Do a lot. Right. That part. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that in itself, and then when I see y'all, I know y'all have been through similar background because we all have. And I was like, man, we got to be some cold pieces of work because we didn't went through some stuff and we still here. We ain't supposed to be here. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but we're, we're supposed here, to be here. We're here giving as well. You know, even yeah. with all we've been through, we never gave up. You know what I'm saying? So we're still here giving. And that's a beautiful thing. And I want to thank you, brothers, for this amazing opportunity tonight to bring some light in addition to the light that's bombarding the planet. You know, now we're able to organize it and give it some context. It's a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. We, we, we're gonna end. We're gonna end it with this last question, real quick. Uh, I just talked about this with uh, Billy the other day. Billy Carson. We had a show on the Merkaba. Somebody said off topic, but what's a great way to activate your Merkaba or Merkaba? Merkaba. 
the thing about activating the macabre, the average person right now is too lazy. Mm. We too fast food culture. The first thing you have to do is center all your energy to core. And that requires a certain level of discipline and mental control that the average person, when they start applying that level of discipline and mental control, abandon the project. It's hard. A goddamn way it's hard. Or else everybody would have an act of macabre if it wasn't hard. Yeah, and we always want the easy way um, to get it. Some stuff I can give you a shortcut. Like in resolving past trauma, when you look at life as life resistance exercises, the more trauma you went through, the stronger you had to be for the job you got coming up. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from that perspective, your past trauma has become the weight in the weight room. Every time you leave the weight room, you don't take the weight with you. You just mm -hmm. go in there to pick stuff up, put stuff down, and make to build your body. Your, your body. life resistance exercise is the trauma you left behind. You lifted it while you was going through it. You done with that now. Move on to your next set of your next um, program. Mm. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be painful. <laughs> you got to remember, we ain't got no emotions when we ain't in the physical. So we can't live in our emotions while we in the physical. We use our emotions to navigate life. It's a difference. If you're living in an emotion, you stuck in that emotion. It's the same as a car being stuck in one gear. Transmission needs to be fixed. In this case, the transmission that needs fixing is the internal communication with the self. You got to ask yourself, do I want to remain the victim or do I want to turn myself into a conqueror? Oh. That's your choice. Person. You know, so um, activating the macabre is not easy. I can give you a thousand tips all day long about doing this part to activate this and all that, but most people are not going to do all that shit. It's too much stuff. It's just too much stuff. They're not going to do it. This is like people be coming on um, um, Chief Why Not asking him about his airbending how long it take him? He said, I've been doing this for this long. He said, that's too long. You got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Nobody won't take the first step and they wonder why they can't get the journey of a thousand miles completed. Because you won't take the first step. If you take the first step, you might end up on the curb in front of a taxi that's there to take you to the airplane to get you on the third journey to a thousand miles in short order. But you're thinking that the only way is to walk because you Right. Cut off your vision. But when you make the step in the direction of the journey, the, the, the road opens itself up. You don't have to open it. Mm. It's the same with developing any spiritual faculty. You got to be willing to take the first step. And then you got to be disciplined enough to continue to walk. As you learn, each step got a different angle that you got to step. Right? And the more that you do that, the more you begin to see this shit easy as hell. I just was too lazy to do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The magic is in the momentum. Um, so the answer that one is looking for is a longer journey that one should be willing to take. Let's start with breathing. I, I was just looking at our video from seven years ago, Brother Rich, uh, when we were breathing in the park with the children. Yeah. Because I was about to update it and do a breathing technique you know, based on, I mean, do another breathing video based on some new techniques I've been learning in the gym, how to do double and triple breaths. Um, you know, the things that are necessary and needed to take it to that, that next level, that Uber level. And like brother Rod said, very few people have that level of discipline to turn themselves into the machine and the mechanism that's necessary to activate their Merkaba. Um, but one of the the key ways is to really first focus on diaphragmic breathing because it's going to 
visualization and breathing are two of the things that are going to be of the utmost importance to activate the Merkaba from the discipline that I was taught. You know what I mean? Like you said, there's different ways that people teach it. Um, but I'm definitely going to be doing an updated video on breathing. It's going to be like a breathing 2.0, though. This is not necessarily for beginners, but uh, I want to offer what I know. Indeed. Wow. Before we get out of here, y'all want to leave your contact info for the people so they can get, uh, get reach out to y'all? Yes, mine is at Blue Pillar 44. That's on uh, Instagram, X, Threads, and I believe TikTok. Um, Blue Pillar 44 at gmail.com if you have any inquiries, any booking inquiries, what have you. And Black Cloud, ENT, dot Banzugu, spelt like Google, dot com is where you can find me and Red's new project. We got the 48 Pillars of Power along with an ebook that is the hip hop handbook. It's like written like the art of war and everything that we said in that book played out last week. You know what I'm saying? In this situation, it puts it into context. So that's black cloud. It's cloud is spelled K L O W D and it's E N T dot Banzugu spelt like Google dot com. Peace. And, uh, yeah, I'm easy to find less information. I'm on Instagram. Uh, uh, the sick eight and on um, Rod Hayes on Facebook. Otherwise, y'all can catch me over here on Brother Rich or y'all catch me on the Young Elder. Indeed, and also, uh, family, just a reminder, uh, Rod Hayes will be on Patreon this Tuesday. Uh, we're doing a show, it's called They're Not Like Us, and we're going to be talking about some things that uh, isn't YouTube friendly. So this is going to be one of them ones that's, you know, it's perfect. I'm glad you said the, that, Rich. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. They, for the, you get it, right? Yeah, they, they, be, they be wanting to give us a hard time for the Patreon. They don't know the Patreon is for the stuff we can't talk about on on YouTube without getting the channel shut down. Oh, yeah. So you had, you had to go to another channel where the people can access the information and still get it without it being censored. And we supposed to have freedom of speech, lying ass bastards. Blue, you know Hank's channel is suspended, man, right now. Hank, I didn't know that from, from that that 2020 thing, the Jabberwocky, wow, an old crazy. video at that. Oh yeah, that's upsetting. Um, the only thing that we can do is work on a solution, and you know, me and Red have been working on something that's about to materialize. And we'll get the last laugh. I mean, you know, we 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 have to come up with a resolution. This is our challenge because yeah. we make great content and we know the value that we bring to it is never going to equate to what YouTube can compensate us for anyway. So we're doing them a favor and getting spat, spat at in our face and they playing in our face. But the only they're making we're plenty of money off us. Plenty. Plenty. That so we don't see. Yeah. Mm. It's so, some some beautiful look, things down the pipeline. You know? What you say, Rod? Yeah. Oh, look, Rich. All the advertisements are gonna come up on your page on this show. They are not gonna give you none of that money. You gotta remember, all them people that's advertising got twenty and thirty million dollar deals to pay YouTube. They are not finna give us none of that money. <laughs> none. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> This whole advertising, it's a whole nother conversation, y'all. But we're gonna figure all this shit out, y'all. We're gonna it's it's uh it's our destiny. So we're gonna yes. figure this whole thing out. Uh wanna thank y'all for tuning in. Uh this northern light weekend, man. There's some beautiful things happening out there. Uh wanna thank once again Rod Hayes Blue Pill for coming on the show. Oh, and also um Rod will be back on Friday. So Rod's gonna be on the Patreon. We're gonna do our show that's have that you know that we can't do on YouTube, but we're gonna have a, a, a you know one of the, one of one of our deep metaphysical conversations um, next Friday on the on the YouTube. So what's the pay? The Patreon is the same as my um the name of my channel, Black Magic Three Six Three. Uh, you just go to patreoncom slash Black Magic Three Six Three. It's not on there now. We're gonna do it on Tuesday, and it'll be up by um by Tuesday night. All right, but yeah, he'll be back on the channel Friday. We're gonna be kicking it on Friday. But in the meantime, um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. 
Saturday night. All y'all enjoy your Saturday night, red and blue. I'm see. I'm say red and blue. <laughs> blue and, and rod. I'm Bob, see you. Hey, blue, one right. thing before we leave. We talking about the the Aria Borealis, the Northern Lakes. Have you been watching Blue Peel Hair this whole time? Yeah, yeah, man. It's in the Cosmos, man. <laughs> it's in the Cosmos, man. Enjoying the Aria Borealis, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful. Imagine thing. the earth. The hair is the trees. True. Yeah, like the hair is like phosphorus. So my hair is already like a light box. And yeah. when light hits it, it emanates different spectrums. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all of these beautiful features about ourselves, like, let's really take stock of this. If we children of the sun, if that's our energy source, let's eat food. You feel me? But let's level up and remind ourselves why they are not like us. Mm. <laughs> On that note, we sign